Welcome back to Beautiful Work, Beautiful Life. We are exploring a new topic for us here on the podcast, and I'm excited to dig in. Laurel, what do you think? I'm excited to dig in too. This topic is one that I can't say that I've given much thought to lately, and it's not a topic I talk about with other people. Yeah. I don't talk about it hugely um, with other people. I talk about it a lot with clients, um, I will say. Uh, And I, well, we'll get into a little bit on the podcast today, but I have explored it a lot in my life uh, in terms of my own um, personal, you know, and, and professional journey, really. Yeah. So, okay. So let's introduce the topic, which is exploring nourishment. We're going to be talking about nourishment all month long. And we are in, when we are releasing this as a new podcast, it is the month of November of 2023. And we thought this was a great topic for this month as we get into the holiday season, because oftentimes the holiday season gets really focused on food and social activity. And so sometimes we end up feeling overly indulged in some areas and still undernourished in other areas. And so we want to get into that a little bit as we um, explore throughout the month, don't we, Laurel? Yeah, we do. What a delicious topic. A delicious topic. Yeah. So if you're new to the podcast, Laurel and I are both life coaches. Laurel, how long have you been coaching? Tell uh, tell our listeners, just so we can like, let's just do like a quickie um, intro, you know, like a, sure. a hit, a, just a quick hit, you know? Yeah. Sure. I started my business in 2019 and I've been coaching clients. My first client was in January, 2020. So it's been just a little over three years now. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Well, actually you're going to be, you're, you're close to four years now, actually, Laura. I am. I'm an accountant for you. I'm good in math. (laughs) I used to be an accountant. So (laughs) I'm always accounting for things. <laughs> and what about you? You've been coaching much longer I than I know. have. I've been coaching a long time. I started out, you know, as a mental health counselor and uh, opened my coaching practice in 2003. So for me, you know, my coaching practice will be 20 years old, it is 20 years old this it year. It is 20 yeah. years old. Wow. Actually, it was December of 2023 that I hung up my shingle. So um, I actually had a physical office in Hopkinton, Massachusetts. At the time I shared with another mental health counselor who was opening up her practice and I was opening up as a life coach. And um, yeah, and I've been working with women and some men, you know, mostly women, but some men. And uh, I decided to become a life coach because at that point I was really into energy medicine. I wanted to weave some of that into my practice and I didn't feel like I could do that in full integrity in the mental health world. So I kind of left that behind and I uh, have been coaching and I, oh my gosh, don't you just love being I a do. life coach and supporting I, others? Yeah. I do. And I, I think that coaching, you can weave in, you know, energy work you can yeah. weave in. I mean, I'm a, a Reiki master and um, did my 200 hour yoga training with a lot of mindfulness, meditation, breath work. Mm-hmm. And I weave those things into my coaching practice as well. And then I love the science, you know, my, the, the coursework I've really gravitated to in coaching yeah. has been in neuroscience, in embodied self-awareness and really, you know, bringing my clients back into their bodies, mm. which is interesting. I think that was part of my own journey, yeah, journey. right? Yeah. In the professional corporate world that I lived in for decades, yeah. I was not really living from within my being. Yeah. Yeah. And living in my head. Yeah. And that's how we end up getting undernourished, which we'll talk about a little bit today in our show, you know? Um, Yeah. So uh, to be able to, you know, support clients on multi levels is one of the exciting things about, you know, being a coach and and doing all the things that we've done. Right. Is. Yes. And, and, you know, I want to say to our listeners out there, you know, this is one of the reasons too, that Laurel and I chose to also share and create some meditations for you a couple of times a month um, is because number one, we love, you know, following both of us are, are kind of astrology um, wannabe people, I think in our, in our, in our, in ourselves, in our internal world. Right. If I said to, I was saying to my son the other day, well, if I had, you know, a full t- time to take on a full-time course, course load, I would really really take a, an astrology class because there's so much to it. I'm reading and I'm trying to like memorize all the things. And there's just a, it's just a huge body of knowledge. You know what I mean? It yeah. is. 
Yeah. So and, anyway, this whole idea of we've been weaving in, you know, meditation. So we, 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 and we follow the cycles of the moon. So we have a, a meditation, you know, once a month that um, hits uh, lands on the new moon for you. And then one for the full moon. And they aren't necessarily associated with new moon and full moon activities, um, but they could be, and they might be. And, and we mentioned that in the description, if you're looking for that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it is such a body of guidance, right? Yes. Like when I think about my, you know, my interest in astrology or my interest in energy work or my interest in neuroscience, right? Human yeah. behavior. All of my interest is because I'm looking for tools yeah. that come with guidance. I want as much guidance as I can get in this lifetime. I right? love that. I do yeah. too. I do too. Yeah. And so I want to tell our listeners in February, we're going to have a month of guests on talking about some of these topics that Laurel and I have just kind of referred to uh, right now, uh, because we want to give you as we do this deepening of the work as we're in season three now of our podcast beautiful work beautiful life um and we want to deepen the work and there's so many beautiful beautiful practices techniques strategies wisdom um bodies of wisdom that you can refer to and work into and have sessions with people you know and learn from learn more about yourself from. Yeah. Yes. And how does that tie into coaching? When I think about my work with clients, you know, all of my clients come to me wanting to make a change yeah. uh, in their life. Often it's their professional life. They've, you know, th they're at a point where they're questioning um, who they are, how they do what they do and why they do what they do mm -hmm. and how they're going to continue it. And having all of these different tools and, you know, pieces of wisdom to help them, um, I'm going to say a mass, a toolbox yeah. of things that, that can, they can lean on for themselves when they need guidance and strength to meet their goals. So I love having all of those, those little, you know, extras in my coaching. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's, so as we think about, you know, nourishing ourselves and exploring this idea of nourishment, um, you know, I guess uh, the t I always use the toolbox as a, a metaphor, you know, of all the things of ways that you can draw on, you know, skills that you have, um, practices that you have, um, ways that you, you know, engage with the world that uh, are tools of living a really great and beautiful life, right? And yes. so this idea of nourishment that we're going to be digging into this month, um, as we explore it today is really the idea that, you know, it's way nourishment is so much more than just food. It yeah. is. It is. And, you know, when we use the word toolbox, when you said nourishment, I was thinking of lunchbox, right? <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> what is my lunchbox and yeah. what is it filled with? What of what of those things that nourish me? that are beyond well beyond food yeah 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 so uh what comes up first when you think about this topic outside food like what's the first ding that you get laurel with this one well it's interesting because what when i think of the word nourishment or even i say the word nourishment i hear the word nourishment you know it it stirs up in me this feeling of i don't want to say fullness from a full belly but but the warmth, the richness, right? It it really feels, um, you know, and I think about, you know, a, a deep, rich color and a a soft texture, right? Like it 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 is a feeling for me that well, I know when I'm nourished because I really do feel I feel I feel complete. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. and so when I think about how do you know how do I feel that, or when do I feel that in my life that has nothing to do with food? Yeah, right. Oftentimes it's being in a safe, comfortable setting. Right. It might be being in a a I'll say a a rich circle of people with some depth. Right. Yeah. Um, I yeah. often think about nourishing conversation. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And it's interesting because, uh, you know, what just came up for me is like, if you if you know, and I, I'll challenge our listeners to 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 
say the word nourishment or nourishing and feel what comes up in your body. And then just for contrast, you know, um, the word um, inspiring Mm. or the word um, um, maybe even the word energetic, right? It, those feel, you know, when I say words for contrast and feel what those words, what comes up for me in my body, yeah, it really does bring me back into the embodied sensation of what the word means for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost as if the meaning comes through with my, the feeling I feel. Yeah. 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 So I think that's great for our listeners to, um, so let's just take that, you know, kind of as a journaling question, like our first yeah. journaling prompt, as we, as we do this exploration this month, you know, what, what, when you, when you hear the word nourishment, what happens inside you? What do you feel? What do you experience? What, what, uh, pings in you, you know, what kind of like, where is it in your body and how are you, how are you connecting with that word in and of itself? For me, that word nourishment is so primal. You know, I always, it, it's like this primal space in me, like that original, you know, you popped out into the world and you needed your mother, you know, for nourishment. Right. Yeah. And so there's this primal uh, sensation to it almost for me, you know, and, uh, and we're not going to survive, right? If we don't have the nourishment we need. Right, you know? right. Um, yeah. And it, it is so interesting to think about that, you know, where you feel it in your body, the sensation that comes. Mm -hmm. um, some of the work in the, the Embodied Self-Awareness course I took, um, one of the practitioners taught us to, to ask our clients to assign whatever this, you know, this feeling is that we feel. Oftentimes, oftentimes when we think about feeling, we think about it as an emotion, not mm. a sensation, right? Yes. And so right. primal is a great example. Primal mm. is really a, a sensation. Yeah. It's not an emotion, mm. um, or at least the way that I feel yeah. it or I think about it. And yeah. so if you think about nourishment or nourishing, you know, where do you feel it in your body? And if you could assign it a color, what color would it be? And a shape, what shape would it be? Yeah. Um, because it because in identifying where it is in your body and then the shape and the color starts to give this sensation some characteristics yeah. to help you better understand it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah. And I was thinking, you know, as we think about this idea of like a primal, you know, primal nourishment and a primal response almost to the word and to the experience, it takes me into that space of, um, you know, for ourselves, right. Go back to Maslow's hierarchy, right. Of our needs being met. Yes. And so, you know, there's the basics, right. Our food and our need for, you know, bodily self-care, those kinds of things. And then we start working our way up the hierarchy. So or we can even think about nourishment in that way, you know, as you, as you explore this topic for yourself this month, you know, just thinking about the basics, you know, are you feeling nourished in the basics of your life? And then kind of allowing yourself to rise up the ladder, you know, from there a little bit. And if you don't know Maslow's hierarchy, just look it up on the internet, it certainly can pop up a, a, you know, the, the symbol for it and all the words right there. And that's easy enough to do. Yeah. I love that because it, it reminds me that sometimes we're seeking nourishment yeah. at a higher level mm -hmm. and yet we aren't nourished at the at the lowest basic level of our needs. Mm -hmm. And so can we really be nourished at that higher level if if we have voids in our basic needs? And so I think I'm going to play with that myself and look at that hierarchy of needs and really feel into, do I have gaps where I'm not fully nourished in my basic needs? Yeah. Yeah. And I know that, you know, as we go on throughout the month, we're going to speak into this, um, you know, and hit into it in different, in different shows, but 
the idea of spiritual nourishment and, and, and I think in our Western world today, in many ways, we're spiritually starved because we actually don't have, I think, good role models and good places to explore, you know, what would really be spiritually satisfying to us and what would be a fulfilling path of spiritual exploration. Because in many ways, some of the religious models are so constricted or restrictive. And so um, we're trying to follow a path that might not feel good or might not feel fully satisfying or that we feel conflicted about. And so we end up not really following anything sometimes, or we, we follow it, but we feel stay conflicted. And so we never really feel satisfied by it. And so this idea of spiritual um, nourishment is, is huge, I think in the world today. Yeah. You know, and I, and, and I, as you were speaking, was thinking it's not just the spiritual nourishment where we are starved is the word that you used. But when I think about intellectual nourishment, yeah. right? We no longer live in a world where we can have conversation that includes, I'll say, you know, discourse, right? We're we're often in situations and in conversations where where with like-minded people and group think happens, right? We're not we're not in a polite, respectful debate. Yeah. So we're intellectually, I often think we're not learning and growing, right? We're starved. We're not nourished intellectually. And then I also think about the connection or the communion with others, right? We, and I bring this connection, you know, that to me, you know, um, I feel nourished. Maybe it's social nourishment, right? Com communal community nourishment. Um, and I bring it right, not just to other people, but with myself. Do I have a deep nourishing connection with all people, with other people, with myself? Um, and that is an area that maybe I'm malnourished, right? right. Um, so I think about that. And then even the emotional nourishment, right? you know, I, I'm the first one to do this. Um, I love feeling the positive emotional pieces of life. And I sometimes don't love what I perceive to be negative or not positive, right? right. Um, there's, there's a lot of talk about toxic positivity and what that looks like. Mm -hmm. That is not nourishing to me. It is having the vastness or the fullness of emotion that I know that I'm emotionally nourished because I can feel all of my feelings. Yeah, I can experience a whole variety of emotions and I'm okay. Yeah. Right? yeah. So it is interesting that. when yeah. I think about yeah, that nourishment great. on all those levels. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. One of the things that I um, was thinking about before we got on the show was like some of the small ways that I nourish myself. Um, and, and so I actually put them right in front of me so that I would remember to share them on the show today, you know? Yeah. And so one of the things for me, you know, is I, I have a garden, a big, I'm a big gardener for people that don't know me well. And, um, and I spend a lot of my morning time, you know, very early in the morning going out and tending my flowers and then bringing in flowers, you know, and refreshing my, my flower arrangements in the house. Right. So that's a very nourishing activity to me on multiple levels. You know, it's, it hits my senses and I'm getting grounded on the earth and I'm bringing beauty into my, um, world around me and I'm connecting with nature in a very, you know, tactile kind of way. And so but there's so many elements of nourishment to it for me, right? That that feel really good. Um, I had a I had a card out. I have a couple cards out and around, um, you know, that are thank you cards or or cards that where somebody was telling me about, um, you know, how much our experience together meant to them, right? And it reminds me of letter writing you know, that I love to send cards. I love to receive cards that are handwritten. I love to 
write a letter and really share, you know, my love for other people or appreciation for them or how I appreciate them on their birthday, you know, that kind of thing. And, um, and it's a nourishment for me of my, my heart and my soul, and then my, my social connections on a, on a deeper level than just a text. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. When you were talking about, you know, your time in the garden and Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I feel that nourishment when I'm walking on trails in the woods, right? Mm -hmm. And with the flora and fauna and looking at every possible little home for a little, every little creature. Um, I'm a slow walker when I'm on the trails, but, but I immediately thought about that spiritual nourishment, right? And your time in your garden yeah. Um. And my time in the woods, and when we were talking about spiritual nourishment before we were, you know, you mentioned religion. Yeah. And I put spiritual into that p- place where we are connected to something greater than ourselves. And those, your letter writing, your receiving letters or cards, your time in the garden, like those to me fit into not just communal, not just emotional but spiritual as well, yeah. being connected to the earth or to other people mm-hmm. re- and humanity, right? Yeah. Like yeah. how how incredible is that yeah. and how nourishing that feels? Yes, yes. And on a deeper level than just, you know, the physical body, right? It yes. just feels like more, more than that. Yes. So another thing that I have in front of me that um, I brought over to uh, hit on was I have... Um, I have, well, I make my own little bottles of um, kind of like an aromatherapy spray, but I also have a diffuser where I diffuse um, essential oils. And then um, I have like a favorite um, spray, rum spray uh, that a woman makes uh, who lives in Massachusetts. I connected with her um, through a friend of mine and she makes them during certain times of the year. And she uses very specific water that she's worked on and she has very specific, you know, uh, things that she puts in it. Now this spray is like one of my favorite things. Right. And when I spray it in my room, when I'm, I might do it right before meditation. I might do it here before the podcast. I might use it before a client comes in. It, it just takes me through that scent, right? It takes me into a different space in my body. It reminds me um, to to connect beyond just the moment that I'm in right now, right? So there are like as we talk about nourishment, right? There are there are ways to remind yourself, and ways to explore, and ways to experiment. Like what will feel like you're fulfilling yourself in a moment to moment way throughout the day. Right. Yes. Beyond food. Yes. Yes. And so you that's, know, yeah, our goal for the month, right, is to help people like walk into that territory. Yeah. Can, and I, I, can you imagine? I mean, maybe you do, maybe you do live this way, but feeling fully nourished mm-hmm. in all that, that sense of nourishment mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah. 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 And, and then we, you know, we often talk about contrast, right? Knowing um, uh, we need the contrast, right? To identify when we um, maybe aren't, you know, in that space, right? Yes. yes. And so the contrast is good. You know, contrast is, is, is our marker to help us go, wait a minute, what's going on here, right? I don't feel very good right now, or I do feel like I lost my way. You know, maybe maybe I stepped away from all my practices too much, or I, my practices have gotten kind of stale and I need to refresh them, um, you know, to feel nourished or excited again by, you know, my daily round, right? Yes. And yeah. when I think about that, you know, practices getting stale or, or you know, we, I mean, I do this, I think we all do this, Um, when we begin a new practice, you know, we deepen a practice and then it becomes routine and it no longer feels as good as it once did. Mm -hmm. But just, you know, bringing that purpose back into it, reminding ourselves that this practice isn't for any other reason than to, to nourish ourselves. Yes to live into a nourishing life. Right. Um, and I think about that, my, 
you know, my morning practice of, of solitude. Uh, you know, some days it's meditation, some days it's simply solitude, right? The days I don't start my day that way, I really feel different. Um, and the feeling I get from starting my day that way does, it sustains me through the day or at least longer yeah. through the day. Yes. And so, you know, that reminder of, I am not doing this because I am a meditator or right. Mm -hmm. My journal, my journaling, I, I don't do it because I'm a journaler. Yeah. I do it because it is a nourishing practice mm -hmm. that helps fulfill me in a sustainable way. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So uh, that's a great uh, journaling question for our listeners, you know, is um, can you go through the, your regular practices and explore each practice on a level of nourishment. How is this nourishing you? Is this nourishing you? And in what way, right? To begin to expand your thinking about this topic and to also look at, you know, if you're not satisfied or you're not feeling fulfilled or something's missing in your life, how can you help to identify it? And one of the ways that you'll do that is by looking at what you have right now and what yeah. is, is and isn't working. Yeah. Yes. Is and isn't let's, nourishing. Let's just talk for a minute. And it came up when you were talking about how, how we, we can create a nourishing practice out of an ordinary task. Right. Yes. Um, and so when I think about, you know, I, I often think about, Oh, it'd be such a luxury to ha have time to have a, a nice relaxing bath. Right. With, good aromatherapy and candlelight and, you know, sometimes even a book, right, in the bathtub. I don't often take time for that. But when I do, it's extremely nourishing. When I shower, you know, the purpose of my shower is your daily habit of washing. But I I can bring some nourishment into a daily shower, even if it's only five minutes, by, you know, a particular soap that I might use, maybe music playing in the bathroom, right? Maybe, I mean, some people have towel warmers. I imagine mm. a towel warmer is a nourishing feel after you get out of okay, the yes, task of washing yourself, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Right. So I, I think that's the, you know, challenge to our listeners. How can you bring meaning and purpose to your ordinary daily task in a way that nourishes you? I love it. I, I want to add one thing to the shower as a as an example, too, of how multi-leveled you can bring to every experience you have, right? So, um, you know, one of the practices, a uh, spiritual practice is when you're in the shower, right, is to uh, imagine yourself and tell yourself, or and you might even speak it out loud, right? I release all fear from my body as I wash any other residue that isn't necessary in my life out of my, out of my, and away from my being. Right. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's this acknowledging that we're more than just the physical body, reminding ourselves of that and then embracing that and bringing it into our moment to moment experience. And it feels like really nourishing self-care, you know? Yeah. You know, and, and, and I was thinking about, all the things that we do, you know, as our routine, things that we do day in and day out that are maybe even because we have to, right? Work came to mind when I when I worked in my corporate career. A good part of that career, I was in a cubicle. And when I think about the number of people that keep their favorite sweater on the back of their chair, mm -hmm. right? Or, you know, I mean, a favorite photo on their desk, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, I often had sea glass on my, you know, right next to my keyboard, right? What are the things that I can bring into my daily life to remind me that I have a full nourishing life? Yeah. And, and I think it's really important so that every area, even the things that we have to do that sometimes we think we don't have time to do or we don't want to do. 
how can we make them more nourishing? More nourishing. Yes, exactly. And we have control over that. Yes. And this is the thing, right? As we, as we explore this, this month is, um, you know, releasing yourself into the idea, the concept that you have, you have the ability to create a more nourishing experience out of even the things that you're already doing or the things that you have to do that you might be tired of doing, right? How can you enliven them and make them more nourishing to you in a way that you want to do them rather than have to do them? Yeah. Yes. <gasps> well, Love that topic. Laurel. Woohoo. Okay. We went all kinds of places that we didn't know we were going to go. And I think we kind of kicked off our month pretty well. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. I would love I'm to know already feeling. Listeners. Yeah, I know that nourished. was, it was yeah. a nourishing conversation, wasn't it? Yes. yes. I hope everybody else felt that too, because, um, you know, just the, uh, I want to come back to this idea of exploring, right? We are here to help you explore all the possibilities of what it could be for you to create a beautiful life. We want to support you in that and we want to explore with you. So, and isn't that just a perfect, um, I'm going to say introduction to this third season we're in, yeah. where we're deepening our beautiful work. And, and, you know, you've been doing your beautiful work for decades. And I, I'm going to say, I feel like, I feel like you are a young adult and I'm still a preschool child, <laughs> both in my business and my, and my beautiful work. But when I think about it, right, like, how how better to deepen our beautiful work than to really be open to exploration and learning and growing and just being curious yeah yeah i hope everybody this month of um as we sort of swing into holiday season here um you know i invite you to find some space in your calendar to explore some nourishment that would feel really satisfying to you. That'll be our monthly, that'll be our challenge this month. Yes. So good. A good assignment. Go into your calendar and pop in some dates with yourself. Yes. <laughs> Call them nourishment dates. Yeah. Mm. Mm, I love it. All right, Laurel. Off we thank go you. for now. Yeah. Thank you. I'll see you next time. Another great conversation. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye listeners.